And I'm saying, woo, right here in Nashville, Tennessee, pal, I'm the man. Woo! We were at the, I think it was the Hyatt O'Hare one night in, uh, in the bar with all the wrestlers and yeah. everyone was boozed up. And Ric Flair comes by me and goes, Eddie, 1670 total, 1972. Woo! <laughs> like that. So I walked by him later, and at the time I had told 2370, and I went, Rick, 2370 total, 1987. <laughs> Woo! That's great. That's what we got to start doing to everybody. Tell them your total. And, you yeah. Know, he was just a, keep walking yeah. off. This is Mark Bell from Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, and we're here today with Ed Cohn. Hi, guys. And Ed is going to show us uh, some assistance exercises that were favorite to his for the squat and for the deadlift and just help build overall strength. So a big, two big ones that he loved to do, stiff leg deadlift and a bent over row. Walk us okay. through it, buddy. Uh, bent over row, depending on where you want to hit, closer grip will actually hit in the mid-back, a wider grip of an upper back. I preferred a medium grip because of the length on my back. I, I, and the way I locked up in the squat and deadlift, right in the middle of my back and lower had to be really, really strong and tight. So, so near, nearly every routine that you did, like when it came to like deadlifting, it was deadlifts followed by stiff leg deadlifts. Stiff legs, bent rows. Almost every single chin workout. Ups, yeah, almost every single workout. For 20 years. 28 years competing. <laughs> there you it's, go. It's, you know, if you find something that works, why stop? Yeah. You know, that, you know, I see people in the gym all the time. They say, well, what should I do for my bench or my squat? I said, well, is it going up right now? Yeah. Don't change it. Don't even <laughs> listen to me. Right. As long as it's working, keep doing it. Because I learned from someone else. They learned from someone else. This kid's going to learn from himself. Maybe he's doing something that's revolutionary yeah. for him. It doesn't matter. It's, if it's going up, don't listen to anyone. Yeah, I've heard Ronnie Coleman kind of say that he did the same back routine for like 20 years. Yeah. Uh, I and think his back was I, okay. Yeah, I, just barely. <laughs> and he had some decent strength yeah. to go along with it. Yeah. So uh, basically... Uh, nice ass, Ed. Would you try to make Thank your you. stance uh, like your deadlift or don't really care? Just balance. Fairly close. Yeah. Medium grip. Medium to wide grip. Tight abs, right here. Oh, pulling it way into your stomach, huh? Yeah, when, when you pull, a lot of people stop here and they just go like this. To me, I end up pulling with too much arms. Yeah. Too many biceps and brachialis in here. So I'll do it like, a, like you see a rower on a boat. So I'll come down with it and let the lat stretch out this way and then pull back up as I'll show you. Boats have engines nowadays. I don't know if you know about that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, I see what you're talking about. You're getting the elbows past yeah. the midline really well. Like yeah. Stan Efforting talked a lot yeah, about if that. Yeah, if I pull up too high, I'm not hitting the area I want. And by stretching it out like this, you're actually stretching your, your whole back out, all your lats, everything. You get way bigger back. And the position that you're in, you're not like a lot of people will get like uh, perpendicular to the floor. Yeah, you're, that's you're, too you're, far. You're that's upright. too far bent over. You, if, if you're too far bent over this way, you'll end up being like this, right. pulling too much with your arms and not your lats. And you can see the movement right. that your lats and your whole back is moving more than just this. And what, what kind of weight did you use on this? Uh, myself and a strongman named Brian Schoonfeld, Schoonie, we used to have contests and Bent over row contest? Yeah, yeah. What'd you win? Uh, win bragging you? rights. Oh, there you go. Well, he was like 375 pounds, so, and he was strong. And I think we went up to like 570-something for Jesus. doubles and triples with no belt. Right. So it was, it was pretty fun. And we'd even have rep contests. Who could do 405 with no straps as many or 275 for 30 right. reps and stuff like that. What was the uh, goal rep range or sets? Uh, eight to five. Okay. So fairly heavy. Yeah. Pushing and, it. and did you care if you got a little body English into no. it? No. Doesn't matter. No, a lot of times uh, what people sometimes think is like cheating or body English enables you to get, if you just stay like this, everyone thinks, oh, that's perfect. No, I want the body English to make my back move to get that yeah. full range of motion. So it, it, it looks like that, but if you look at the, how the back moves, it's, it's more perfect right. to use more muscle. And then the uh, stiff leg deadlift. Pretty much the, the, the same stance as a deadlift, maybe a little closer, 
I, a lot of times stand, stand on a 20 kilo plate, but any deficit deadlift I did, whether conventional or stiff leg, wasn't that high, because if it was that high, it won't transfer over. Hmm. It's too far out of what a regular deadlift would be. I gotcha. So I would just get the first one up, abs tight, tiny, tiny bend in the knee. Now you see a difference, a lot of people stick their butt back and pull it here, close to them, I don't do that. I keep my abs super tight. You're pushing that weight all the way out by your toes. Yeah. Which is like a, you know, a huge disadvantage. You were telling Mike earlier huge during the conventional deadlift, but keep it in tight. The, the, the amount of stress on the muscle, especially your hamstrings, is so much greater. Because you're not going in a stiff leg contest. Right. You're saying, how can I develop this muscle to be stronger in the long run? And, and, and you're doing this me, movement pattern for stimulation, not necessarily just no, a, it's, it's not the, the way to lift the maximum amount no, of weight. It's you're not a way going to, in a stiff leg contest. Right. You're going to be using weight and you're going to be going up in them because I would cycle them. I would do like three weeks of eights, three weeks of six, three weeks of four in an off season. What about grip uh, for both the row and the um, stiff leg? Would you go double over? Would you ever go double under? Would you go uh, mixed grip? Double, double overhand. For both? Yeah. I never did double underhand. Like, you know, that's like the Dorian row. Yeah. yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't grab the bar like that. I, I bench with a double overhand. Right. I squat with a double overhand. Deadlift is mixed. Yeah. So it was no. What about when the weights got heavier for stiff leg? You use straps or? Yeah, if you have to, definitely. Right. It's an assistance exercise. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not like a regular deadlift. A lot of these kids on the internet now, everyone's using straps to try to emulate the pros. The pros are already at a certain level. A lot of these kids are using straps so much that two things, they're not developing the grip and they're not developing their technique because your t technique is way, way different when you wear straps and when you don't. So why would you wear them? There's no reason to. Maybe on, you know, like we, we just said, bent rows, some stiff legs, or heavy ass shrugs. Right. You know, what's that uh, saying now? Uh, traps are the new abs. You talk about uh, bracing your core a lot on all the lifts and these kind of work in your abs. Do you do any other like actual ab work itself? Not really, very, very rarely. Only if I wanted to like bring him down and be pretty, but since I'm never going to be pretty, I don't bother. It was a lot of uh, beltless stuff. Like you just saw when I did stiff legs. In order for your back, when you let that weight down, to stay like this and not go, uh, you have to keep your core. Yeah. As they say, and that's like everything from here to here. Right. And every little muscle and every stabilizer in between has to be tight and strong, or else your body's going to crumble. So it has to adapt to that stress load, but you have to set it up to adapt to that stress load. So tight, tighten that whole ab region, Right. hold your breath, and then do the set. So stand sideways, brace yourself against the uh, power rack. So you're actually pulling against the power rack with your other hand. Up, lean back a little bit. Again, brace here and squeeze the sides of your abs and just squeeze your fingers as hard as you can. Try to hold on for 30 seconds. Week by week, you, you'll be amazed on how fast your grip adapts to it, and you'll be able to go up in pounds. When you first start, it feels like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so weak. Just start adding weight, and all of a sudden it starts coming on. Can you tell us approximately how many inches you want to actually do the lift for? Like it like, looks like you're lifting it maybe like six inches, yeah, eight inches. Yeah, just enough to lean back so it doesn't hit. So grab that and pull against there. Okay. And keep your sides tight. So you're actually you're actually not standing up straight. You're actually leaning a little bit. Oh, you got a little bit like right here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Up. Put your hip into it. So lean back a little bit. There you go. Right there. And see, I'll, I'll I'll balance it just in case, but I won't hold it up. You see the shake going on? So you see the, the shake weight. Yeah. You see what it does to your whole body. Holy shit! That's now tough. Look at your hand. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't want to open up and it's like yeah. waffled. <laughs> but week by week, I guarantee you, the next time he tries this, all of a sudden, 15 or 20 seconds will turn into 30. Then I'll put a 10 on. Then I'll have a quarter on. Then I'll have two plates on. It really starts adapting. And then it'll be like, you know, like the old days when you're healthy, you grab the bar and you just like smile because you know you're going to get it right, right away. It has that type of Give it a try there, Silent Mike. Let's go, buddy. I'm just scared to get close to him rather than do the exercise. He's going to fucking cry chop you right in the throat. Make sure you're in the middle. 
All right, one, two, up. Lean th there you go. Lean back. Lean you already back. feel my oblique. Yeah, it feels yeah, awesome. Squeeze. Yeah, you can feel how tight they have to be. They're tight, huh? Yep. Ah. Well, compared to a 15-year-old fat girl. <laughs> oh. That'll make your forearms grow more than anything. If Silent Mike was to come at you with a knife like this, what would you do to him? <laughs> I will show you. You'll get it on video later. I think that pretty much concludes the uh, assistance exercise. Ed does a lot of um, mixed martial arts type stuff. He likes to throw headbutts, and so that's why I'm kind of like here, and that's why Mike ran away. Uh, but that's it from supertraining.tv on assistance exercises for the squat and the deadlift. Thanks, Mark Bell.